Hi guys, this is Breaker, and I'm back with a little extra credit homework, I guess you could call it. Just, you know, trying to contribute to the community again, not cast it. And if you are the uploader of this replay to Drop that SC, please just go ahead and click on the subscribe button to my YouTube channel, I'd be more than grateful. But, spawning as the Zerg in the lower left-hand corner, I give you all... Drone of Arc. Very interesting name to say the very least. In the upper right-hand corner, our Terran in the blue trunks, his name is... Scorp. Yes, yes, yes. Two very unique names, I'll give them that. And the map we are on right now is Neoplanet SLE. I guess, you know, since I, I suppose we don't really have too much else to talk about, I mean, I guess I could go on another monologue about myself. There's no more, you know, there's no info on the Chinese scene um, lately, but I do want to say that, like, as kind of a freelance caster, someone who talks about the game, someone who sees lots of, thi lots of things, and it seems as though no two games are the same that I watch. Um... You know, I just want to say that it kind of deprives just a little bit of time, a little bit of personal time, if you will, towards actually playing the game. And I mean much more towards, say, the end of StarCraft, the spectrum of StarCraft, definitely. Um, you know, getting that playtime in, it's just, it's not really happening. But um, one thing I do like from Drone of Arc right now is he's, he's going to go ahead and send out a drone scout while simultaneously doing what? I think it's going to be a double hatch opener. Yes, it looks like it will be. Um, 15 supply, no pull down yet. You know, 9 times out of 10 versus Terran, unless you're doing some kind of, like, I want to say silly shenanigans, silly proxy shenanigans, like what Damaga tried doing earlier today versus 4G, or not 4G, um, LGIM MVP. You know, in case you guys didn't catch that game, what he did was essentially the map was, um, Neo Planet S, or no, not Neo Planet S, um, Star Station. And what had happened was he went ahead and threw down a, uh, this is what I'm looking for, a hatchery at the bottom end of his base, and then he canceled it, and with the remaining creep, he went ahead and threw down a Roach Ward. Basically, when the scouting SCV came from 4GG, he actually didn't go ahead and, uh, do an extracurricular scout, if you will. So he didn't check all of the inside main, and of course that main on Star Station is just absolutely massive. So essentially, what had happened was he went ahead and, you know, he, he, he encountered the roach, the road rush that he was going to encounter, no doubt. But uh, let's go ahead and look and see what we got coming from Scorp. He's gonna go ahead and send out a Reaper opener. Excellent choice, respectable choice at that. It's going to arrive just outside the natural, and whether or not it goes anywhere is entirely up to him. Now, Drone of Arc here, I think, is doing this opener pretty ballsy, considering he's already got 19 workers on his on his main. He's got two queens in the mix, and he's got two lings. Not two pairs of lings, just a single pair of lings. Drones, kind of, you know, I like that micro skill. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. But where are the lings? They did just pop. Are they at the natural? Yeah, they were. Just came back into the main. Queens. Oh, man. Where are they? I'm, I'm a little curious to see just what kind of an opener this is. I mean, like, if we see a Terran that is not all too persistent, then he's typically not going to try and go for a kill on a queen. But, of course, we do have the four queen opener, the traditional four queen opener that's been, you know, basically a Wings of Liberty classic ever since. What was it? The 1.4.5 patch where queens got a range increase. Reaper is going up and down and up and down and up and down, just kind of not really able to make up their minds. But the queens will come out and start spreading creep. I see this um, as an opener that we kind of see increasingly more and more as you know players are getting comfort more and more comfortable with what uh, with a uh, with facing off against reapers. But I think the biggest problem that's working against Drone of Arc right now is of course the two reapers that are over here and thoroughly restricting any drones from getting out in that direction. Now. One thing that I will highlight is that he certainly has the opportunity to take a third right here. He has more than enough opportunity to do that. Oh, but what is this? Is this is this drone gonna get picked off again? No, it's not. No, 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 no. Okay, so the queen saw it, and these two queens in the main will be more than able to take down these two reapers. But of course, um, looks like we got the two queens outside the natural. Kind of just a little hesitant to spread creep. There are no creep tumors, Lane laying down it just yet outside of the natural it looks like drone of arc is kind of just making a slight mistake but now we already have two hellions out here and it looks like drone of arc is gonna go ahead and take this for his third base while simultaneously following this up with double evolution chambers and now a roach warren so 
I don't know, given the fact that he only has so much information on his opponent right now, I'm willing to say that, you know, he's probably possibly going to try some kind of a, a timing attack. Not necessarily an all-in, but something that's definitely designed to kill uh, drones. Or excuse me, dr designed to kill SCVs, workers in general. Uh, four Hellions and two Reapers have arrived to the party. I think Drone of Arcs is going to let his opponent go before that. But whoa, 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 what is this? We got melee in research right now. Rotorn finishing up. Double gas is at the natural finishing up. Double gas is in the main already taken, and it looks like that third was forced to cancel. It was. And you know what? No, I, I'm willing to say that this is actually just Drone of Arc. No, he's not going for a timing attack. Instead, what he's trying to do is he's simply trying to control his end of the map and, um, you know, just make sure that these Hellions and uh, Reapers can't do too much damage. But I do think that is a bit many Hellions, especially given the fact that we've seen so many barracks and we know that this is supposed to be a bio follow up. So the question is, what are these Hellions going to be used for along with the SCVs? We have seven altogether here. Rule of thumb is if you see more than six, then you're going to want to get um, you're going to want to get a Roach Warden. Interesting to note that these Hellions actually haven't come in here and seen this just yet. Now they're going to come in here and they're going to see that there's no third here. But if we can see the Terran go ahead and scan this area, then we'll, he's probably going to go, oh crap, I'm in a heap of trouble. Now we do have STEM and research. And a good deal of marines coming out all at the same time. Two widow mines being made at a time as well. The Hellion's still virtually oblivious to uh, the Roach Warren here. But of course, metabolic boost is like less than 50% done. Scan picks up on these lings. These two queens are going to come away and just shoo away these, these Hellions and these Reapers. But I don't know. Looks like, oh, there's a beautiful transfuse. And finally, we do have some roaches out to deal with hellions. I want to say that, you know, of course, one roach versus this many hellions is not going to do the job. But, of course, three, four, five roaches at max. You know, I think four roaches and two queens would do a good job against that. So, there we go. The creep spread really getting underway. Um, Carapace just now finishing up. I'm, I'm wondering... Hold up. I'm just a little curious. How does how do you get plus one and not get metabolic boost at the same time? Well, that's a little crazy. Well... At any rate, we do have Drone of Arc kind of supply blocked right now. He's going to try and make some more. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? The Overseer is going in. He's going to see that this is not necessarily an all-in, but this is an attack that can do a lot of damage. He's got to pick up on it. You know, with the Widow Mines and the, the Marauders and the Marines and the Mix and so on. Um, I do want to note that there's limited anti-air here. Aside from the Widow Mines, there's only two Marines. So, you know, I think if we saw... Some mutas come into the mix. We might see Drone of Arc do just fine. Oh boy, but what about those? Oh wow, those Widow Mines did almost nothing. Beautiful splitting by Drone of Arc, it really was. But now we also have a defensive overseer coming down. Marine coming over here, making sure there's no third going down back in the position that it was going for originally. These Widow Mines almost reloaded on their shot, if you will. It looks like these Marines and Marauders are getting confident about picking up a kill. A little overtly confident, if you will, but... There we go, the Roaches are going in to tank for them, and... Looks like, ouch, that Overseer was taken down. That's what's really going to hurt him just a little bit. But of course, um, of the of the original four Widow Mines, it looks like we only have two survivors. They are reloading shots right now while they're inside the medevac. So don't forget about that. Now we do have an, a changeling and an, over, an overseer here right now. So what does our Zerg know? He knows just about everything about uh, Scorp that there is to know right now, except for those two additional barracks in the upper right-hand corner of the base. Scorp getting ready to pull this medevac back around and drop inside the natural, I'm thinking, perhaps? No, no, no. But changeling and the overseer kind of eh, taking up some room here. Of course, those Marines are all on, like, auto attack or whatever have you. Oh, wow, that's something new. I didn't know about that. Okay, so apparently these are the Devil Dog skins, and whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, man, there was a Widow Mine behind all of this that took down a lot of drones. That's eight altogether. And it looks like this Widow Mine here is still reloading its shot. And Whoa, what is, what is this? I'm, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm completely oblivious to just what our Zerg is trying to do here. I'm thinking perhaps this was a misclick, but it's entirely possible that I'm wrong in stating that. Yeah, I, I think seven 
you know, seven swarm hosts, there's no way I could be a misclick, but I'm still a little oblivious as to how he's going to make this work. Does he know just what kind of composition his opponent is going for without a single doubt in his mind? It should be bio. He saw the barracks. I'm thinking this is a rather unsafe move, but to each their own, and we might learn something new today. I mean, come on. Stefano didn't become a master overnight, but, you know, he did become a pro after saying he wanted to be a doctor, and that's about it. And, you know, unfortunately in August, he's got to go back to, uh, he's got to go back to med school to basically, you know, try and save lives. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking back to that game we all heard about earlier today. I actually saw the, the video on YouTube. Uh, Stefano ended up um, essentially making 4GG's Medivax and Widow Mines work against himself. He became his own worst enemy in that in that game, essentially. Uh, we do have a Medivac moving out over here, so the question is, what is his aim to do with this? Scorp picking up on the Medivac, getting under attack right now. The Ling is just kind of gathering underneath it, trying to do whatever damage they can. Marine gets taken down again at what would be, I imagine, the fourth base. And behind this, we also have a drop going down at the 6 o'clock position. And at the natural at the same time. So we see a lot of damage being done here to Drone of Arc. Oh my god, Scorp just doing all... You know, he's, he's playing Octopus style right now. There is one thing that really, really needs to be highlighted. It's that these uh, Swarm Hosts are not... They're rallying over here, yes. But the problem is the Locusts are all heading over here. Meanwhile, it looks like the drop that went originally to the third is going to pick up and go into the main. The Infestation Pit does fall. We do have the Ultralisk Cavern on the way now for Drone of Arc. But I'm thinking, you know, there's just so much damage that's already been done. This is being taken as a fourth, so I think it's okay to just pull drones temporarily, even if it means migrating them to a location where they may never be used. And finally, we have Scorp recorrecting that original uh, swarm host route, if you will. And the locusts are making the connections as they should. And now we actually see Drone of Arc in a miraculous comeback of combat supply. The only question is, can he hold on until those Ultralists pop? These Swarm Hosts are going to fall. We know that much. How's he going to follow this up? I think it's going to come in essentially the form of... Ooh boy, Ultralists coming forth. But it looks like perhaps, just perhaps I was wrong... Stem forward to the win. Scan going down. It looks like these Marines may just be able to barely hold against it. And that does happen. Scorp is still playing from behind now. I mean, that was... Oh my god, that was something new. I mean, I kind of like that. That's transitional swarm hosts. Nobody has done that yet. And this is the first time I've ever seen it in any replay ever in my life. And that was just absolutely brilliant play by Drone of Arc. You know, even as one surviving swarm host to tell the tale. Now we do have the ultras here. It looks like they're kind of getting misclicked just a little bit. Ling's kind of rallying back and forth. Of course, the natural, the, the main, the third. You know, the main's about dry for Terran. It usually goes dry about two minutes faster for Terran than it would for Zerg. But here we go. The ultras are finally being forced to rally in here. And this is the beginning of the end, guys. This is no coming back from this. Sure, the marauders... Like, their concussive shells don't do anything to the Ultras, but that's a lot of damage being done to them. But it's the Marauder count just isn't high enough. The Hellbats would make excellent tanks, I think, for the uh, Ultras, because they do... Ultras generally do bad against uh, a bunch of little tiny targets as such. That's why we see so many Marauders being used against them. Plus, they're, ult they're armored units. That's about it. You can see, like, the Marines trying desperately to pepper away at them, but they're just not making it. They're just not cutting it. And finally, the Ultras just chomping away, omnom nomming at all the SCVs in the main, now being chased down by Zerglings. And I want to say that the position we see Scorp in now is just one that is of a Spartan at the Battle of Thermopylae. He's going to go down fighting, it looks like. Oh my god, the Ultras trying to make what damage they can't happen. It looks like one or two do fall, and now we have... All the micro in the world being utilized here. It's just not going to be enough, though. I mean, Drone of Arc, we just see him powering... Or, yeah, we just see him powering his way through the main right now. It doesn't matter how much micro is used at this point. You know, there's no coming back from what we see here. We have a four-base Zerg, three-base mining Zerg, going up against an effectively one-base income and infrastructure Terran with the income taken down to zero, almost. 
16 times the income from Zerg. And now we see Drone of Dark, Drone of Arc in a position where he just can't lose this game. I mean, it, we could say it's impossible. I would say it's simply improbable, because using the word impossible to describe a game that can't be lost is just unrealistic now. We do have these mules coming down here and trying to get the income back up. In a desperate bid of... That's the word I'm looking for. Game suspension, if you will. But now, you know, Scorp, he's just going down fighting, as I said before. Once he runs out completely out of bio units in the main, he might change his mind, but the Widow Mine's coming into play as well. And I think we see Scorp in a position. There it is. Final G. And he just leaves the game. Alright, so if you guys liked what you saw today, just go ahead and click on the subscribe button. This has been Breaker. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to maybe add me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Or on Facebook. That would be facebook.com forward slash binge sc2. Like such. Yeah. So I will see you guys next time.